Hello and good morning, Uganda. Thank you so much for tuning into Smart 24 TV, where we drive your business. This is Financial Markets, and my name is Anthony Sebali, your host. Now, today we have a very special discussion, and if you're joining us from different parts of the country, remember uh, to follow us on Twitter at Smart 24 TV now, and uh, our YouTube channel as well at Smart 24 TV Live. You can catch us as well on Go TV at channel 302 and DSTV channel 372. Well, the Airtel company, Uganda, is for the first time issuing shares under what is now famously the Airtel IPO. Airtel Uganda is one of the biggest telecommunications company in Uganda with a subscription of close to 14.3 million subscribers, uh, representing about 47% market share in the telecommunications industry it is indispensable for us to discuss this very momentous occasion. It happens once in a while, and uh, this is a chance for you to buy shares into the biggest telecommunication company within the country. So uh, joining me on set is none other than some of the biggest uh, gentlemen in this IPO. When we talk about the Airtel IPO, we have uh, Mr. David Birunji, who is the public relations manager at Airtel Uganda. We do have as well the stockbroker who is leading this IPO, and that is uh, Mr. Calvin Bateme, who is now from Crested Capital, the broker for this Airtel IPO. As well, we have Mr. Seruo Murunji, who is a corporate and investment banker from ABSA. ABSA is the transaction advisor for the Airtel IPO. You're most welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for hosting us. Yes. I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Virunji. Yes. Uh, David, first of all, tell us about Airtel listing. What does it mean, first of all, for the business and the industry in general speaking? Uh, thank you so much. And uh, we uh, believe this is a very big opportunity for Uganda and most importantly for the Ugandan market. I don't know where you are, but in uh, August 1995, the first mobile telephone call was made. It was made on a network called Celtel then, which has since gone through many hands to become Airtel that we know today. You called on our viewers, our dear customers from across the globe, wherever they are watching from, in between this transmission uh, building and their either handset or television, there's probably an Airtel 5G connection. Wow. Now, that's a very big opportunity for whoever wants to make money. So. Mm. Airtel has come forward and uh, on 30th August we put on offer 8 billion shares. Mm -hmm. uh, these are ordinary shares and uh, each one of them is 100 shillings and the offer closes on 13th October. And we, we couldn't do that alone, we had to bring in partners to my right, the requested capital is lead uh, stock brokers for the transaction. To my left, uh, ABSA, these are the transaction advisors on how to go about an IPO. But most importantly, the 8 billion represent 20% of the company that Ugandans out there who are customers have an opportunity to own into the success of this company. The success has been registered. If you look at Airtel for the past five years, we've been the fastest growing telecom in this country. Mm. You mentioned the numbers, uh, those are 30-day 30, 30 base of 47%. There's a time when we were not. There's a time when we were probably under 30%, mm. when there were other players, many of whom were acquired by a growing company. So our trajectory has been a growing telecom company. And we didn't grow out of the British Ugandans who supported this growth. Mm. So we have come back to the Ugandans and said, please, here is an opportunity for you to own a stake in this successful company which is known for many firsts. Uh, a first growing company, mm. we were the first to bring uh, some of the cutting edge technologies. Nin 2019, even up to this day, we are the only telecom that covers the country 100% 4G. When the country locked down in, during COVID, we maintained presence everywhere so that our health workers can work, our security forces can work, our students could still go to school, but we could not do that without CAPEX. Mm. Behind all that, we invested ahead. If we had not laid out that capex, probably the outcome of the Ugandan economy would have been much different. Mm. We have seen us come and launch. We are the only telecom, uh, probably, in, on the African continent, 
that has, between getting the spectrum and launching 5G mm -hmm. was the fastest. We did it in under seven days. We were able to put 50 sites in Kampala, including where we are right now. Yeah. You can get speeds of up to 1.7 Gbps, meaning functions that are out there depending on the fastest internet, telemedicine, commercial agriculture, manufacturing, condition, machine monitoring, mm -hmm. all those functions are going to be very important and we believe that we are on a growth trajectory. We have grown o over the past five years, uh, compounded annual growth rate of about 12.4%. Mm -hmm. We believe that that uh, momentum is going to be maintained because there's opportunity in this company. Mm -hmm. and this is why we are calling on Ugandans, especially those who are watching me. Uh, we have a few days left to the IPO. Get your 100 shillings per share, a minimum of 2,500 shares. Go to your nearest stock broker, Absa can brokerage for you. Quested, I think, no, that would be clarified. Quested yes. Capital can, uh, can do brokerage services for you. But most importantly, on your Airtel money phone, mm -hmm. you can dial star 185 star 85 hash and begin your investing journey. Yeah. And join us so that you have a voice and an ownership of this great company. Well, wow. thank you so much, Mr. Virunji. When you talk about the internet speeds, I think that's a very, very important aspect of the telecommunications industry today. Uh, speaking about internet access in Uganda, Airtel is doing a lot in that line. But let me bring on uh, the broker here. Uh, Mr. Calvin, w when you talk about the initial public offer, uh, the Uganda Securities Exchange has at least uh, not had an initial public offer in the last two years, and now Airtel comes on board uh, to issue shares. First of all, tell us what this uh, IPO uh, is and all about when you talk about an IPO, some Ugandans we could be speaking a language they probably don't understand. What's the difference between an IPO and a secondary market kind of trading? What's the difference between uh, you know having an IPO for this particular period and what Airtel is going to experience after 13th of October? Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Basically, an IPO is a primary market. If you are to differentiate between secondary and primary, it's a primary market. And simply in the primary market that we are introducing, yeah, a company is selling its stocks to the public for the very first time. Uh, maybe before I proceed, I'm Calvin. Mm -hmm. Calvin David Bateme. I work with uh, Crossed Capital. Yeah. Um, I do deal origination and I head the research department also. So an IPO is uh, in full, is initial public offer. Yeah. So we've, uh, in the last two years, this is the second one, uh, Airtel. Uh, the difference is an, a primary market and a secondary market. In the secondary market, these are already listed entities, and those ones you, you are purchasing stocks from whoever bought them at IPO. Yes? Mm -hmm. So it is just, it's the market, free trading. But in the primary market during an IPO, we are not in the market. We are buying directly from the, the issuer mm -hmm. itself. That's the company. And in, a, in the primary market, you do apply for the shares. Mm. You do not purchase them. Because we, uh, we, we, could, we could have an oversubscription. Mm. We, so in this essence, you apply for the shares. So you shall be allotted. You asked me what will happen after the 13th. Mm. We shall be allotting the shares with those who applied for them. And uh, this will be on a pro rata basis, mm. in that we shall consider Ugandans first. You know, remember, Airtel is selling to Ugandans first. They want to broaden the ownership of Ugandans into a Ugandan company. So they, it is going to be on a pro rata basis, and I encourage us, those who are watching us, to go and read the prospectus and understand, because it's always key for you to invest in what you clearly understand. So read the terms and conditions of the offer in the prospectus. How, how many pages is the prospectus? <laughs> I know Ugandans, uh, <laughs> we have a challenge with reading very bad The prospectus things. is about, the, because we have two versions of the mm. prospectus always. The Zana Bridge version, it's mm. about 58 pages, and the, the full document, those who want to get the nitty gritties of everything. Mm. So around 368 pages also. Wow. Uh, those ones can be, <laughs> you can come through the, through mm. the weekend, you mm. are done. Mm. So, after the 13th, we shall be doing the allotment. Mm. Then the company shall be listed on the 31st yes, of mm. October. That's when we shall, the free market will begin and we shall be selling them. Wow. Free, free, free trading will start on the 31st. Yes, yes Mr. Virunji, you, you, want to, you want to say something? Yes, when you talked about reading and... <laughs> My mind came to how many scrolls we make on our smartphones <laughs> by end of the day. If each scroll was to be a page, <laughs> 
how many pages will you have read by end of day? So I think uh, there is uh, information, it's important that we provide information we are going to list. The, we owe that duty to Ugandans to ensure that, you know, uh, that information is put out in the simplest of forms. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to our social media, uh, we have tried as much as possible to cut down this information to make mm -hmm. it as homely as without negating the regulatory requirement for that information to be correct and to be asymmetrical to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done that, so you can go there, look at some of our YouTube uh, pictures, uh, the summary of the offer, mm -hmm. uh, uh, all there. But if you want to go in depth, we have the abridged version of the prospectus. We have a fact sheet. It's, they are very on our website, which is www.airtel.co.ug slash IPO. We've been able to condense as much information. And if we get feedback that you know so much is, uh, is needed, can you change it this way? And we, we are still within the realm of the, of the, of the duration. Mm -hmm. We certainly go back and change. That's our mandate to ensure that we are communicating properly and people are getting the offer. Absolutely. Information is quite important when it comes to investing. Yeah, That's, this is where I want to bring in Mr. Mulungi here. Uh, you are the transaction advisor as APSA. What is your role in this particular initial public offer? And does it end with the IPO? After Airtel listing, will you be out of the entire Airtel business or you're still sticking to the business? Uh, th thank you, Anthony. Uh, good morning, viewers, again. Uh, my name is uh, Mulungi Servo, as Anthony said earlier, I'm a corporate and investment bank. That's a bank for Uganda Limited. Uh, so, essentially, when a uh, company is uh, going to list these shares and ultimately offer them to the public, like Airtel is doing right now, uh, there are lots of things that need to take place. It's uh, fairly uh, a significant undertaking. It's uh, not that. Uh, uh, entails lots of things. You need to uh, navigate certain regulatory issues. Uh, you need to uh, bring together lots of other advisors like accountants, lawyers, uh, etc. Uh, you need to advise on uh, the structure of the transaction. What's the offer price going to be like, uh, uh, for instance? So, uh, Absa's role as the transaction advisor is basically to advise uh, Airtel on uh, the transaction. Uh, and ensure that uh, we have uh, a, uh, a successful uh, listing. And uh, by successfully, I mean uh, ideally we want to have uh, a full subscription. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that, that's what we do, work in tandem with other advisors. Like I said, uh, Ads is not uh, the only advisor. We have uh, other advisors on this transaction. There's Cards, there's uh, uh, Ernest and Yam, who are the accountants. Uh, we have CNR as registrars. Uh, we have a uh, PR firm because uh, this needs to be advertised. So we work in tandem with all the other advisors and uh, Airtel to ensure that uh, we have uh, a successful transaction. Might I say that in addition to being lead transaction advisors, we also are the lead receiving bank. Mm -hmm. There are five receiving banks on this deal. There is ABSA, Stambik, Stanchat, uh, DFCU, and Equity. Mm -hmm. uh, what that means is that uh, when you're applying for, like uh, David said earlier, at this point, you're applying for shares. Mm -hmm. You're not yet buying because they've not yet been allotted to you. So when you apply for shares, you apply for shares with the money. You don't just fill an application <laughs> form. You need to apply yes, with cash. exactly, mm -hmm. and you can use uh, any of these banks that are uh, mentioned uh, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, to remit your funds towards uh, your application. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, before going to a break, uh, Mr. Benunji, mm -hmm. what are some of the potential benefits of investing in Airtel? Uh, the Uganda Securities Exchange uh, stock market. When you look at our market performance. Over the years, there's been improvements, of course, mm. uh, but there's also been a little bit of uh, inactivity. When you look at, for example, comparing our market to Nairobi Securities Exchange, when you look mm. at the volume of traders, when you look at uh, the, the number, the turnovers on, mm. on the counters, it's still wanting. What do you think are some of the potential benefits to, first of all, our stock market that Airtel could bring on board? Maybe. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, maybe what I can uh, pass a around for our customers and the public who are watching and listening to us, if you look at Airtel, we decided to list and we called on advisors. Mm -hmm. Some seated to my, both my, of my left and right of my hand. Uh, if you're going to invest in the IPO, you need to speak to a financial advisor. Don't do it alone. Mm -hmm. 
because it would answer your question. If Airtel, a whole big Uganda's uh, fastest growing telecom, can seek advisors, you who is committing your money, speak to a financial advisor, speak to someone, there are many. And the, uh, uh, these are some of the brokers. There's uh, Diane Breyer, there's Crested Capital, there's, uh, I think, uh, Standing SBG. SBG. Mm -hmm. so walk over and speak to them and see what advice they can give you. Mm -hmm. uh, we are different even when we're in the market. But mm -hmm. uh, most importantly, the benefits of investing in uh, an Airtel IPO. Uh, my messaging would be around the opportunity. Because past performance is, is done. The shareholders got their benefits, and the dividend policy is also out, uh, outlined there. 95% percent of uh, <coughs> percent of uh, retained earnings or, or net, uh, profit after tax, whichever is higher, and is paid quarterly. That is past performance. When you're buying into Airtel, what are you buying into? You have a, you're buying into a company that is growing. If you look at the uh, uh, Telecom statistics, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes, the tele density penetration in this country is still low. Mm -hmm. It's still low. It's not yet even 50%. Because many of our people carry more than one SIM card. So there's opportunity for us to grow. I talked, when I was opening, I talked about the data. If you look at the smartphone penetration in this country, it's still low, under 35%. Mm -hmm. If you look at services we brought, for example, uh, 5G, 5G, the biggest applications are in jobs that require fast internet. How do you monitor a, a, a factory that is in Fort Porto, that is bottling 100 bottles per second? Mm -hmm. How do you monitor? You need a fast internet, and you need a telecom to provide that. If, how do you carry out uh, telemedicine? How do you operate and, and, and teach 100 medical students that are in different medical schools across this country? and they are doing anatomy class, you need data. So we're going to see the opportunity in the segment of data growing because this country still has opportunity. And most importantly, the opportunity that Airtel has is you, we have a young population. 18-year-olds and below are many. Someday, including today, someone has turned 18. The moment they turn 18, they ask for the right to vote they ask for a smartphone and other things I will not mention on air. But most importantly, in the three things they ask, there's a smartphone, meaning they want to connect. Those can be, and there's opportunity to connect them for life. They come to the network and they stay until their last day on this planet. Mm -hmm. So that population is growing and we need to keep them connected. But what are we connecting them to? We are connecting them to opportunity. If you look at young people, the businesses they are making online, they are growing. And lastly, we have a long tenure. We have a license of, of 20 years with an opportunity to renew for another 10, and we have only done two years. So you have about 28 years to go. That's a very huge opportunity for anyone who wants to work with us that journey. And I think this is the time to get on board and get onto that. The past performance, the numbers are there if you look at it. Mm -hmm. The revenue profitability, you have an EBITDA mm -hmm. growth of about 0.3 percent. You, you talked about Kenya and Uganda. Kenya is a 110 US dollar uh, billion economy. Mm -hmm. We're only 44. And these are numbers that have just been revised. So if you look at Kenya, the, uh, for example, you talked about the telecoms in Kenya. They are breeding the asset better because the, the, the base numbers, people are connected to the network, are connected to smart devices are many compared to Uganda. We need to connect more people, and we have demonstrated over the years that we have the capability to do that. And I think that's what people should buy into. The past performance is in the prospectus. That should inform me. But in terms of the future, that's where the opportunity is. Thank you, Mr. We're taking a very quick breather, my friends. And now when we return, we want to talk about the details included in the IPO. What do you need to do to buy the shares? But also, uh, we want to look at the risk analysis. We have a transaction advisor here. Uh, when you're investing in stocks and uh, all these other financial markets, it's not a bed of roses. It's uh, some calculated risk taking. So what are the risks that could be involved and how can you best approach them? My name is Anthony. We return after this very short breather. Stay with us.
स्मार्ट ट्वेंटी फोर ड्राइविंग बिजनेस Say goodbye to paperwork and travel costs. Now every MTN customer can register to invest in securities anytime and anywhere with Zabu in a few simple steps. Step 1: Dial star 292 hash. Step 2: Select option 1. Register with Zabu. Step 3: Enter your full names. Step 4: Enter your national identification number. Step 5: Enter your national identification card number. In 24 hours you will receive an SMS confirming your registration. Congratulations, you are now ready to invest. In a world where trade drives economic growth and development, Africa is now embracing a new era of intracontinental trade through the African Continent of Free Trade Area to unleash its immense potential. With Mass the spirit of entrepreneurship as African businesses forge your way into partnership and venture beyond their borders in a single African market. Discover the innovative solutions being initiated and created to address challenges and seize opportunities in sustainable agriculture, renewable energy and technological advancements. We expand our lens to showcase the efforts and success of economic integration across the entire African continent from West Africa to East Africa, North Africa to Southern Africa, Central Africa and even the diaspora as the tapestry of unity grows stronger with each story we tell. African perspective driving business and trade across Africa. Don't miss the African perspective on Smart 24 every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at exactly 6 p.m. East African Standard Time as we drive business and trade across Africa. Download the Smart Digital app on Play Store and enjoy your favorite TV shows, documentaries and radio in your car on the go. Twenty-four driving business. Welcome back, and thank you still for remaining with us. This is Smart Twenty Four TV. We drive your business. We're discussing the Airtel IPO opportunities and challenges ahead as well uh, for you. When you look at the Airtel IPO, uh, we are looking at collecting over 800 billion shillings. Uh, that is across 8 billion shares that they are listing. 20% stake in Airtel is up for grab for you as an individual, as a company, as a family. You can be able to buy shares into Airtel today. The IPO is ending on the 13th of October. So better take your chances before uh, you can't no more now when when we talk about mr murungi uh, investing in stocks one thing i understand is it's not a rosy you know sort of investment you do, it's not a walk through a park and uh, as a, as a, as a financial advisor i think one of your roles is also to let people know uh, that hey this is a business and uh, there could be risks uh, involved but as well when we talk about business without taking risk sometimes it's hard for you to make progress so uh, let's talk about the risks that could be involved in investing in a company at an initial public offer but also how can someone be able to safely maneuver these risks uh, thank you david for that question i mean um, 
life as it is generally speaking is not uh, a bit of process like mm. you said and uh, anything that we do in life follows uh, follows suit mm. just like investing in uh, in shares so uh, I mean, uh, risk is uh, a very, very broad issue. You can spend the whole day here uh, talking about risks, and there is a whole uh, chapter in the prospectus dedicated to uh, the aspect of risk, chapter 8, so or section 8. I encourage viewers to go and read section 8 in uh, the prospectus. Highly recommend that I comprehensively read uh, section 8 in the prospectus to understand the aspect of risk. But uh, I, I'll just mention a few. I mean, uh, for instance, Airtel is uh, operating one within an economy within mm -hmm. Uganda. There is going to be risks uh, associated with uh, Uganda as an economy. Uh, where will inflation trend? How will it, what is going to happen to exchange rates? Uh, no one knew uh, COVID could happen. No one knew um, Russia was going to invade Ukraine. Uh, some of those factors end up affecting uh, Uganda as an economy. And if the economy is affected, uh, naturally uh, entities operating within that economy are also going to be affected. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you look at risks within, uh, within the sector, within uh, the telco sector. Mm -hmm. uh, you might be subject to, uh, say, uh, the risk of new entrants. Some of these might, be, uh, might not be uh, very, very significant risks, but risks nonetheless. Uh, they could be competition. A competitor might uh, decide to uh, act in a, diff a certain way that could uh, affect uh, the shares of the company uh, that you're investing in. Uh, in uh, the prospectus, they talk of uh, the prospects of voice. I mean, uh, the prospect that voice uh, over time mm -hmm. uh, might give way to data. That's yeah. uh, a risk as well. So there are tons of risks. Like I said, uh, might not comprehensively cover them on this show, but uh, I encourage readers, I mean viewers, to read the prospectus. Perhaps. The one risk that uh, viewer, uh, listeners, my dear listeners or viewers might want to hear me talk about, and I think uh, David can uh, further substantiate on that, is uh, the aspect of share prices going up and down. I mm. know I've talked to several people who say, oh, I've invested in this, the share price has gone down. Mm. Uh, share prices go up and down. Mm. Uh, it's uh, a fact where whichever stock exchange you look at in this world, you're going to see share prices moving up and down. That's why it's important uh, to talk to an advisor like uh, mm. like David uh, advised earlier. You need when you're investing in a company, you need to be comfortable mm. with the fundamentals. Yeah. Share movements in share prices is in most cases uh, short term, but you need to be very happy and comfortable with the company's fundamentals. What services does the company offer? Where is it heading? Who is managing the company? What's uh, the outlook of the company and the economy? And I think that uh, that's perhaps a way to go as opposed to relying on. Uh, on uh, short-term movements. Then for our market as well, we have uh, the aspect of uh, liquidity because uh, there are few players on the stock exchange. You're likely to have issues. When I say liquidity, the mm. ease with which you can uh, sell yeah. your shares or convert your shares to cash, mm. uh, that is an issue in our, on our stock exchange because there are few players. Mm. It's something that needs to grow. And that's why uh, we are grateful for Airtel. I mean, because whenever another company is listed on the stock exchange, it means the stock exchange is growing. You have more players, more participants, and more players and more participants means uh, that uh, the uh, stock exchange is growing and uh, uh, it tends to enhance uh, the prospects of uh, liquidity on uh, the exchange. Well, thank, you. thank you so much, Mr. Murungi. Uh, David, uh, you just had Mr. Murungi pointing out some of the potential risks, and these are the usual ones that we have for any company that is a listing. But as a stockbroker, you interact with traders, you interact with the exchange, you've interacted with so many Ugandan investors. What would be your view of uh, Airtel's now listing? in as far as risk is concerned. Do you think the space is enough for Airtel, big as the company is, to join this stock exchange at the moment? Thank you, Anthony. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I would first say yes, Airtel, why not? Mm. Yes. The stock market can take up as many companies as they are. Mm. And asking Airtel, a big company like Airtel listing, if they 
encourage other bigger ones to come. Mm. And as investors on the stock market, if we see such players in the in the economy coming on board, we are happy because now we are going to share on the piece of the profitability these companies are are making. The, the money that Mr. They, yes, yes. Has they have been alone. they have been enjoying alone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, if uh, you early alone you asked about the potential benefits mm. for the investors who are partaking in the IPO, these are many. Because uh, if Airtel was telling you they are making so much, mm. and now you you can take part of that. But firstly, the first benefit when you participate in the IPO is taking the bonus, because mm. they are giving incentive shares to whoever is participating in the in the IPO. Five for every hundred. If you're using the oh, Airtel yes. line, mm. six for every hundred. Mm. If you are going to buy, you know the Airtel has said that the more you buy, mm. the more you benefit from the IPO. Mm. Yes. So if you look at if you are going to buy between. Uh, 2,500 to 18.7 million shares, you're getting five for every 100. If you're buying more than 18.7, you're going to get 10 incentive shares. And if you're going to buy to a tune of 37 million shares, you're getting 20 incentive shares. Mm -hmm. And you know Ugandans like Jalibu and Bonus. Mm -hmm. And the, <laughs> the, the, the TA, the transaction advisor, made up the transaction to be in that manner that Ugandans are here <coughs> to scoop it. So that's the first benefit. And see, they have said they're giving away 95% mm. of profitability as dividend. And that's a high. This will be the second highest payment mm. on the on the Ghana Swiss Exchange. And I think also in East Africa. Mm. Yes? So that, that that's a great opportunity for you as an investor to come now. No, not that I'm waiting for the secondary market. No, no, no. Come now, take the incentive. Mm. And on that, also, um, it, it will have an effect on your effective price. So it, mm. if you are give, being given free shares at the IPO, then effectively the price also goes down. Mm. You get So it is highly profitable and it's a big company to invest in. So as an investor, uh, it's another way of diversifying your, what? your portfolio. We saw that in 2022 all listed companies were pro profitable. And now they are bringing a more profitable company. For those of us who have looked at the financials of NSSF, you said they reported that they made a lot of money from the market, mm -hmm. a lot of money from the dividends. So if one of the biggest investors is making much from the dividends, why don't you come and also join them and invest the same way they're investing mm -hmm. and you make money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yes, Mr. Zubin. Yes, when talked about the, and they are profitable, it's true, yes, we are profitable. Uh, I was mentioning to some people that, you know, we make... Uh, a profit, profit after tax of a billion per day. It's there, if you're making, it's, in, it's there in the prospectus, so it's public information right now. If you're making a profit after tax of over 365 uh, million, billion per, per year, that is over one billion per day. Mm -hmm. So why should that profit not be shared among, um, uh, among Ugandans? So I think that opportunity needs to be put forward. Maybe you need to clarify mm. this statement that the company dividend policy is 95% of the retained earnings. Okay, we've been asked, I've been asked several times that, you Sounds know, too good to be. That, why are you not retaining mm. this, uh, this profit you are, you are making? Why are you willing to pay it out? Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, people need to make a living out of their investments. Mm. And we have come forward and said, for you, to have some wealth, you do not need to have arcades, you don't need to have square miles of idle land, you do not need to own rivers and mountains. There are companies, including Airtel, that will return around your money, make you get a profit. And when we do, you should get a share of that profit and you can't do other things. Mm -hmm. And we're saying we shall pay out 95% of profitability to shareholders as dividends and pay it quarterly. Not half a year, not annually, no. Mm -hmm. Quarterly, we come out and pay the dividend that is due to the shareholders. Mm -hmm. Somebody was asking, why are you not retaining all that? The truth is, we put out the CapEx early. Mm -hmm. 2019, we became 100% 4G. So the network is not, is not yet depleted so much that we have to make uh, so much investment. We've come out and laid out 5G. We are ready now to bleed the asset. So we believe that the, the people who are uh, good at finance, we look at the finance structure, we look at debt structure, and look at when we now need to retain more, and more profitability as retained earnings. But for now, that's what we have promised. It could change. Uh, the, 
manager, financial managers could change, but for now, that's what we are working with. Wow, interesting. Mr. Meruji, actually, here is just clarifying a point that uh, in, since 2018, Airtel's uh, net profit after tax has been increasing from 49% uh, to uh, over 110% in uh, 2022. Now, if you're a shareholder in Airtel, you're going to be taking 95% of the retained earnings. That's a very good deal, and I would uh, be taking that if I were you. Uh, but Mr. Calvin, uh, once again, if you could project for us uh, from Crested Capital, how exactly am I going to be able to buy these shares? How much can I buy? Of course, you've already mentioned the minimum is 2,500 shares, uh, but you're saying here we are applying. So, and applying is with cash. What are some of the conditions uh, attached to this transaction? Okay, uh, that's a very good one. Mm. Uh, firstly, yeah, to mm. participate in any, any, any stock market, you need a securities account. Yes, that is in Uganda, we call it an SED account. If you go to other countries like, I think India, they call it a DMAT account. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they call it a DMAT account. Mm -hmm. it more likely it looks like a DMAT account, but it's a DMAT account. Yes. But here we have a security central depository. And Airtel has made it simple for us. All you need is your national ID, mm -hmm. yeah? Any phone you have, any phone. You dial star 185, star 85 hash. Yes? Uh, you, you see two options. One is open, apply for an SCD account, and two will be applying for the shares. First select one if you do not have an SCD account already. Yes? If you already have an SCD account, just go on to option two and apply for the shares. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one till now, it is not too late. Option one, apply for it. It's very important you select Crossed Capital as your stock broker. Mm. Yes, because <laughs> you'll be served well. Yes. Select Crossed Capital as your stock broker. Your SED will appear. It will come to you as a message. Mm. If it doesn't, please call 0758-230-900. Someone will help you on how you retrieve your account. And even if it doesn't come immediately, just proceed. Mm. Yes? Maybe it could be, maybe your phone has very many messages or something. So if you've applied and you've received your application ID and the SED hasn't yet come, just go ahead and apply for the shares. The minimum is 2,500 shares, so you'll need 250,000 to partake the first, the first lot. Mm -hmm. And you can apply in multiples of five, uh, 500, meaning that you can buy for two, uh, 250,000, 300,000, 400,000, a million, 100 million, yeah. or 1 billion. Mm -hmm. Yes, but remember, the daily maximum on your Airtel line is 20 million. So if you buy shares of 20 million, you may not be able to transact on that particular day. So you must be very, um, plan well. Mm -hmm. If you want to transact again, mm -hmm. don't use all your daily limit to do that. So you can, but if you do not use your phone, mm -hmm. you can apply through the US e Easy Portal, yes? Yeah. But with the Easy Portal, you will have to deposit that money in a bank like uh, Mr. Mulonji said, you take, go to ABSA, they give you an IPO account, deposit that money, and make your application. Remember, for every application you make, you must fund it. Because mm -hmm. during reconciliation, when you reconcile an application plus funds, an unfunded application will not be okay. taken serious. You shall just leave it there, and you'll miss out on the good incentives, and now, and now the 95%. And if you read Professor Perewell, Airtel is saying, you will be, if you are participating in the IPO, you will be entitled to quarter three and quarter four dividends. No. So this is a catch. And quarter three, people will think quarter three, what is quarter three in yeah. November? Just, by no, no, it's, so, it's so ended actually, are, yeah, are payment will be in November. So quarter, quarter. by the time the, I, the, the, <coughs> the company is listed, you will be, be getting a dividend. Cashing out. You'll be cashing out already. Yes. So that is a catch to get. And also quarter three, quarter mm. four is also, we are in quarter four. Right? Yes. So, you'll so you, will not, you, will not, mm. you are not yet an investor, mm. but you're already earning. Yeah. So it is a good catch. So if you've not yet applied, it is star 185, star 85 hash. Mm. Apply for the SCD. Option two is apply for the, for the shares. And you will be a shareholder of Airtel. Well, that, that's very, very interesting. Mr. Murunji, uh, is ABSA uh, in any way uh, helping our investors somehow in a special way get, first of all, the financial advice? Because like you mentioned, you need to read the prospectus, but you mentioned the pages, and I, I was really, I was really discouraged, especially concerning the people that we have. The attention span is quite small. People have so many things to do, but is ABSA providing some sort of uh, maybe help, financial advice for all the people that would want uh, that particular help? Uh, thank you.
actually for that question. So uh, upsize as we speak now, uh, we're already offering that uh, that guidance. Mm. Uh, however, like, like I mentioned earlier, uh, on this transaction, rather our role is to forward we a lead transaction advisor to Airtel the client, uh, and also lead receiving bank. Uh, so for this particular, yes, uh, we can. Uh, of advice, but in this case, it's uh, likely to our uh, to our client. For those individual investors, uh, yes, uh, please feel free to come to uh, to any of our branches, and uh, we can guide you accordingly. How, however, I would recommend uh, that uh, for for uh, people who want to invest, please go to uh, your stock brokers, the likes of uh, Crested Capital, and any other stock broker of your choice. Uh, for for that individual one-on-one -on -one, uh, advice uh, so that again you you make a decision uh, that is uh, well informed and well advised yes well mr Bidonji, as <laughs> we, we almost come close to the end yes uh, where do you see airtel after this ipo and in the next five years we've seen for example statistics showing that operating expenses will be going up for example by 13.5 percent uh, due to volatile fuel prices, uh, which in the last two weeks, when you look at, uh, in last one month actually, uh, they have almost increased by 200 shillings and planned investments, both in distribution and network expansion. So amongst all these challenges, where do you see Airtel in the next five years? Before I come to that, uh, maybe to assist on other customers who may want to invest. Mm -hmm. uh, this station has its roots in Jinja. Tomorrow we'll be in Jinja at Bugs Hotel mm -hmm. to take the IPO to the Jinja people. Kodeo, Tvalamu mm -hmm. uh, We are also in Rugogo. We have uh, a, a tent you can walk in uh, and uh, have a chat with our people. Uh, we'll be able to guide you on how to invest. Our over 100 service centers across the country have information about the IPO. So don't get stuck out there. Uh, get out, uh, get to an air service center, mm -hmm. get to Rugogo. We have a dedicated tent for the IPO. Uh, go to Jinja tomorrow at Bucks Hotel. Uh, we'll be in Jinja. Um, on Thursday, we'll be in Barara at Oxford Hotel. Uh, on Friday, we'll be in Gulu at the Boma Hotel. So that is to do with where you can reach us this week. But we're also on various media houses, which is why I'm here. Uh, where do you see Airtel? In terms of the macroeconomics, the macroeconomics of the country are deemed stable, and uh, that's the advice we've taken from advisors, and uh, we will maintain that outlook. Uh, we know uh, it could change, but that would be in the medium and long term. And uh, we have demonstrated over the years that we can ride the macroeconomic changes, some sudden or those, who are, those which are spread over a long period of time. Uh, we are also are prudent in the management of this business and we are going to carry that prudence into the, the we when we become a public uh, company, the way we manage costs, uh, <coughs> if you look at uh, we, the way we operate, we tend to bring in uh, fast technologies that deliver more value for customers so that the benefit out of those technologies uh, is shared across the business. and. Uh, also for the benefit of our customer. We still remain the affordable uh, company, even when the costs were increasing, we have not increased the prices, and uh, we maintain that because we believe that we should be a company that uh, breeds the asset better, mm -hmm. uh, meaning we're looking at volumes, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to maintain the strategies that we have in the current, and because they're still delivering the profitability that everybody's looking for. When the need arises for us to change, we have a competent uh, leadership and management team uh, that is able to manage. And when with a rich experience, be able to manage any changes in the macroeconomics. Thank you so much, Mr. Birunji. Thank you so much, Calvin. And thank you, Mr. Murunji, for the time uh, you've spared to share your insights with the public. There, we, you, you have it right there. Ladies and gentlemen, the Airtel IPO is set to close on the 13th of October. Uh, the, the guidelines are very clear for you to buy shares. You can use your USSD code, star 185, star 85 hash. You can also visit any of the entities that we've mentioned, including ABSA, including uh, uh, Crested Capital, the stock broker, or Airtel itself on any of their service centers for you to be able to participate in this 
uh, occasion which comes once in a lifetime. And that's it from us. Uh, Smart24 TV is continuing to drive your business. A lot more business shows coming ahead. Uh, stay tuned. Have a very wonderful day. Bye for now.